So what are the best and the worst motivated sellers to deal with in this real estate market? As the housing market changes and shifts, as it slows down because of an increase in inventory, as interest rates rise, and then it makes it more difficult for people to buy into a house, there are certain sellers that are easy to, easier to deal with than others. There are certain sellers that uh, make it a lot easier for you to do a deal with, and others, it's just gonna be an uphill battle. So let's discuss who those sellers are, and that way you can keep your eye out and especially if you're doing online lead generation like we are and we get a lot of different sellers, different situations and circumstances, you know, part of the game is fine tuning exactly what is the ideal prospect, the ideal avatar, and then you're focusing on those leads primarily before anybody else because you don't need to do a deal with everybody. You just need to do a deal with a certain number of people that are gonna be in the, that I, that are gonna be the right prospects. Let's talk about, first of all, the worst property owners. Number one, listed properties. Listed properties are real pain in the butt. Um, they're asking too much money and they haven't sold. Many times they fill out a form online and they're asking the same amount of money that they're asking on the market, on the MLS. And what ends up happening is that in order for you to do a deal with a listed property, you have got to be able to uh, have a property that you're acquiring at a much greater discount than what it's being offered at on the MLS. So if a property is on the MLS for 300K, I mean, you've got to be way below that. I'm talking about probably in the high 100s. So unless there's other circumstances, it's going to be difficult for you to do a deal with those people. And frankly, there's so much of, a, of an abundance of property owners that are not on the MLS that frankly, I wouldn't even mess around with those people. And I would just go ahead and ignore them and just focus on the other types of leads. The second property owner that we typically ignore are people that are in pre-foreclosure situation, unless they have a ton of equity. But if they don't have hardly any equity and they're pretty much mortgage all the way to the top, um, we ignore them. Now, some people try to do subject to deals with them so that they can get the mortgage current and then they could do a deal with them. But I frankly don't recommend anybody that, who, that is a brand new investor to get started with subject to deals. They're more difficult. Uh, there's a lot of nuances associated with that. And when things go wrong with those deals, a lot of things can go wrong with those deals. So generally speaking, when we see a property that is a pre-foreclosure situation, then we completely ignore those sellers and either have a five minute conversation just to make sure that, hey, what their equity is, but if their mortgage is really high, very, very close to the asking, we just move on to the next prospect. So let's discuss what I consider to be my favorite type of property owners. And the reason for these being my favorites is that they overcome a particular obstacle right now in today's market. And that obstacle is that if you have a, an owner who lives at the property and needs to sell their property in order, and then they need to find another property. The problem is inventory. A lot of the inventory right now, some markets, it's really heavy and they're, it's overpriced. Interest rates are high, so they could sell their house, but then they may not be able to afford the next property that they're going to because the sellers right now, even though the inventory is high, they don't really realize that the market has shifted. So it's difficult for those sellers to move on to where they need to go next. So in an ideal situation, the seller doesn't really, is not really depending on finding a property of where they're gonna go next. The first type of property owner is an inherited property. That's my favorite. That's because they gotta get rid of the problem property. In fact, they got nowhere to go because the person that had somewhere to go already went where they needed to go, which is six foot underneath the ground. So they've deceased. And at the end, now you've got the kids that own the property and they need to get rid of it. Maybe there's multiple heirs. Whatever the situation is, probate, inherited properties are really great because of that. They just gotta get it done. And sometimes it's sitting vacant. Sometimes uh, you have a family member living at the property. Regardless, it's more of a nuisance for them. They wanna get it over with. They're, you know, they, they, they just don't want to uh, deal with this anymore. So that's why inherited properties are really great. Let's talk about property number two, which is a divorce situation. 
A divorce situation is always good because they gotta move. And they don't care where they go because they just want to move on with the rest of their life. And it tends to be more of an emotional decision rather than a logical decision. And that's what we want. We want them to be just completely done with their situation. They wanna get rid of uh, their, their, their other spouse in terms of that person being in, 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 in their lives right now. And so at the end, if they can go ahead and get this thing done and over with, they're willing to cut ties and uh, maybe cut their losses and just move on. So that's why that, that, that type of property is a great property to have. And so when we see those come up, then uh, we're always got our eyes on those leads there as well. The next type of property is the tired landlord. And the tired landlord, we all know who that is. They just, they got tenants. They're, they've owned this property for quite some time. They've had enough. Tenants might be paying rent, might be okay, but you know, it's just, they're, they're, they're ready to move on. And the great thing about this is that, again, they don't need to go somewhere else. Like they don't need to sell, they don't need the contingency of where they're gonna go next after they sell this property simply because the property has nothing to do with their personal residence. So as a result, that's why this particular property owner is really great during these economic times. Another type of property owner is the one that owns a vacant property. Now, sometimes that's a mixed bag of goods because if they have a property that they own as a rental and or whatever the situation is and it's vacant, one of the questions you wanna ask is how long has this property been vacant for, right? Because if it's been vacant forever and it's just been deteriorating, then those are difficult. You want something that has been vacant fresh, meaning it's recently been vacant. That means that there's a smaller chance of vandalism. There is a smaller chance of, you know, um, deterioration with the property. So we want something that is recently uh, vacant, but not, you know, like it's been sitting there for two years vacant and it's a shitty frame house in the middle of nowhere. That's gonna be problematic. It's gonna be hard for you to do anything with that particular property. And so therefore, a vacancy is great, but with some asterisks in that particular situation. By the way, if you're interested in getting these type of properties into your lead funnel for your real estate wholesaling business so that you can do more deals and not have to cold call or do any, any of the other stuff, then go ahead and click on one of these other videos here that will appear. And then that way you can learn how we find these properties and you can do the same thing as well.